Because one night last year, something came to mind. So I picked up the telephone and got Toby on the line. With a disguised voice and Toby on the screen. I asked him about his regs and he told me everything. Well, he said, right now, business is kind of slow. But I'm hoping it's going to pick up or else we'll be out in the cold. He said, what can I do for you, you for? Maybe a box or two? I said, no, my business is booming. I'd like to have quite a few. Well, with excitement in his voice and me having a ball, I was even more delighted that I had made the call. Toby could see the dollars finally rolling in, but wouldn't be too pleased when he found out it was on the other end. I then asked him the price of his rags, were they sold by the pound or the box? He said, I'll give you the same price as commercial equipment, seems that you're buying a lot. I asked him, how do you receive your rags? By the truckload, my son, he said, bags upon bags. Some are good, all whites. Expensive, number ones, you see. Others are jeans and denims. We call these number threes. He said, the way it is with me, clothes don't cost big bucks. I search through the bags and I can't believe my luck. There's pants and shirts that's good enough to wear. Not suitable for my wife Fern, but I really don't care. <laughs> First turn, went in. Oh, she put it. Well, anyhow, yeah, this is how it goes. We made the arrangement to meet in Lewisport, just outside the Commerce Bank. I could tell he was smiling, thinking about the money he was about to make. The conversation was going great, and we even planned a tour. I said the factory in the North Arm. He said, by the way, he pointed you to my door. I said, a man named Ivan Gillingham, my dear recall. He said, sure, he's my uncle. I said, nah. <laughs> In the case, sure, I'm kin, my son, to you and Fern. Fern is his wife. You see, I'm Ivan Gillian's son. My name is Gurn. <laughs> All of a sudden, the conversation came to a stop. He started to sputter and say things he should not. Fern said, Toby, you should, sure can make me mad. But 12 o'clock that night, I couldn't have been more glad. <laughs> The next day before noon, many calls were coming in from people wishing to tour the rag factory and buy some rags from him. But Toby was in a bad mood and his head was starting to spin. Now how can I get Gern back, he thought. I'll get help, from, get help from some of my kin. Since then I felt sorry for Toby's sake, so I decided I'd give him a real good break. Bruce Porter's gunsmithing business is losing a lot of bucks. For about a month ago, now that was a year back or so, for about a month ago, I started sighting in guns and I shot my brother Wayne's truck. <laughs> I'm the first one on that either, by the way. Now that my story has come to a hint, I hope Toby and I remain good friends. Toby's business has since been sold, and I believe he must have struck gold. He's riding in style and got money to burn. Let's everyone stand and cheer Toby and Fern. <laughs> Not the other day, uh, dare to fall. And every now and again we used to separate, eh? And sometimes, you know, as I was like the woods, eh? One hunter's track, somebody else's tracks and everything. But I go, always follow me, buddy. Show you what. Pass the gun. <laughs> he used to walk like this. Well, <clears throat> yes, to 
is true what he, he just said, some of it. <laughs> but uh, I've sold a business and he's kind of jealous there because he didn't make too much money as I did. But, <laughs> but it was New Year's Eve as I sat in the chair. My mind contemplated the events of the year. Hunting season still led me in the head as I thought of the moose that Nell may be dead. <laughs> the boys from Hapleton went hunting this year, and the story I'm sure you will all want to hear. <laughs> but Wayne had bull homely, oh what a fix. Uncle Hyven and Katie had either sex. <laughs> Dinner was Doug and Lorraine, they had a license for two. And last was poor Navin, but here he is 22. <laughs> Well, he hunted the Norwest to the steel bridge and back, all the way into Mount Payton, and never seen a track. <laughs> they hunted in their pickups, they hunted on their quads, they crossed over ridges and held on the bogs. They hunted in the valleys and checked every hill and crossed every clearing, but the moose are there still. <laughs> the season's getting short, there was no doubt. We better call Wentz Wheaton to get him to take us out. <laughs> See, they had a bird problem. They were going hunting all the time. And it would all come out in the story. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very particular with the details. <laughs> well, they called Pastor Riggler, Roy, Gord, and Gurn. Back Slate and Katie Gilliam, each one would take a turn. But it was the same old story when they got back to town. It's just too quiet, boys, you can hear every sound. Well, they blame it on the haulers, they blame it on the bows. They blamed it on the wildlife, because all they saw was cows. <laughs> I would have got one if it weren't for those boys, because when they're walking, they're making too much noise. But the truth of the matter, they didn't want to say, because they were shooting that moose every single day. <laughs> Well, they shoot him in the leg, they shoot him in the hump. They miss and hit a rock, a hole, or a stump. There's bullet holes everywhere, in almost every tree. They even found a bullet hole in the hood of Wayne's truck. <laughs> that didn't rhyme, but I had something else. <laughs> There's moose walking crippled and limp everywhere. The wolves won't have to worry, there's lots of meat this year. <laughs> well, the scope is the problem. It's off a little bit. I'll take it down to Pastor Riggler. He'll fix it good and quick. <laughs> yes, I can fix it. Don't worry about it, chaps. But he fired off two boxes of bullets just twisting on the caps. <laughs> You know, the caps is on top of the, 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 the scope for those ladies that's here that's not hunters. <laughs> you got to take off those caps and turn the thing inside. <laughs> oh, that's a tale. <laughs> so, <clears throat> well, if you want it done right, well, take it up to Gurn. Those poor old boys from Hamilton. When will they ever learn? <laughs> Why did you take it down to Pastor? Gurn said with a grin, it won't take me very long before I'll sight her in. <laughs> well, Gurn leaned across the tree, uh, across the bonnet, to shoot at a tree. But when he pulled the trigger, he shot the LTD. <laughs> XLT, yes it is. Anyway, it's something XLT around there. XLT truck. Yeah. <laughs> After many trips, with every one they knew, like the whole woman in the shoe, they knew what to do. <laughs> Although it was against the grain and losing all their pride, they had to come to Norris Arm and finally find a guide. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> that's it. The, the truth of the story, truth of the matter. <laughs> Well, me and Leroy got together. Someone told him of our powers. We knew if we didn't get deer moose, they'd be wanting all of ours. <laughs> well, first was Leroy to the rescue. He took Navin, Ian, and Roy. Before the dawn had fully broken, a cow went running by. Take your time, don't get nervous. Leroy whispered in Navin's ear. It's a perfect shot from where you're standing, because she's right there in the clear. <laughs> well, after all the shots were over, and the rifle had cooled down, Leroy's ears may still be ringing. 
while one cow lay up on the ground. Our next came Ivan. He was desperate. Usually is. Uh, Katie too was quite in doubt. And again it was the same old story. Get your moose or dish hours out. Well, Leroy took him in across the clearing. You stay here and keep a high. I'll try to drive one to you. You can shoot it as it runs by. Sure enough, one shot blasted. Another moose was lying cold. Heart attack more than likely, because we can't find no bullet hole. I figure right now, with all the, the hoist that's on the trees and everything, I'd say he's on that ski trail in the back of the park, there's trees falling everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't stand up and wait for the many pool holes in them. <laughs> okay, where was we? Okay, uh, then came Doug to my door knocking. Can you help me, Toby, he cries, cause the Gillians wouldn't get a moose if they were out there take a flies. <laughs> Well, I took him in on the ski trail, told him where the moose would be, then I circled in around him and drove one out so he could see. Like a flash, the gun was booming. Bullets were flying round my head. I hit the dirt and lay there waiting till another moose was finally dead. Well, that was three boys taken care of. Little by little, we're making gain. Now there's one guy left to favor, that tall man we all call Wayne. Well, when it comes to pride and arrogance, egotism and self-esteem, of all the Gilliams that are living, he's the head that I've seen. <laughs> My son don't run out of tape right now. Every time he puts me on, he runs out of tape. Okay, <clears throat> where am I? He wouldn't come to Norris Harm. His pride wouldn't let him take a turn. But after all, he must admit it, he did break down and call Gurn. <laughs> I see, he didn't want to call Gurn. That was against the grain, that was. Well, Gurn and Wayne, they got up early, hunted to the close of day, now totally disgusted because three more moose had got away. <laughs> One final walk across this middle, through the alders just ahead. If we're lucky, we'll see one, or may we find one already did. <laughs> swish, swish, with Wayne's jacket. As it passed each limb that day, jump and dying, Gern shouted, every moose you'll drive away. <laughs> Reeving, roaring, Bob Wayne. I didn't know what to wear. Why wouldn't you give me a suit like the one you got on there? <laughs> but ain't the biggest kind of argument they did up there in the <laughs> Well, just as the fight got started, hop jumps, bull, cow, calf, and runs. Wayne and Gurn with eyes wide open as they scrabble for their guns. The big bull stopped and glanced back. Maybe he too had a laugh. Nine shots were fired that fine evening, but they came home with the calf. <laughs> Well, now poor old Doug needed one more moose, and I had no more time to spare. So we had to call on Hoyvin to finish off the hunt this year. <laughs> <laughs> He's really desperate now. Okay, so to the towering Norris Arm, Ivan took him before daylight. A cop stopped him on their journey for hunting while it was still night. <laughs> when dawn broke, a moose was standing. A great big cow, tall and fat. Poor old Ivan couldn't see her. He must have been blind as a bat. <laughs> Two pretty good ones, I'd say. <laughs> 
Don't grab the gun and took care for him. He could taste her in the pan. The moose moved and Ivan seen it and grabbed the gun from Ivan's hand and from Dougie's hand. For a while there was a struggle as to who would make the play. But before it was decided, The incident about the truck is true. You can go out and check Wayne's truck and there's a hole there. Guaranteed, and he didn't rust in her. <laughs> so, uh, on behalf of Jeff Oley Industrial Rags, sir, my wife and I, I would like to present you with this t-shirt. <laughs> and it says, Successful Truck Hunter. <laughs> Had the proper through, but a lot of other stuff now is a little bit <laughs> mixed up in there. Anyhow, Toll, thanks. I'd like for us to give Toll a good hand. Boys, uh, we can do it. He's the uh, life and the spice of this getting together most every time we have it. He's here, right? Most of it, every time he's here. And uh, I don't know why he don't move out here, to be truthful with you. There's nothing in North Iron for him, so he's out here. <laughs> but uh, we enjoy Toad coming, and I'm sure everybody else do. Uh, a little bit foolish, but that's, that goes with it. Never got that from one of the Gillian. I never, is it We can't have all the hoosunners living in it. No, that's right, now. But I'm going to ask him to stay on it, Gary. There's one thing, boy, that, that kind of scares me about moving out here. I'm afraid it might get shot. 